Hi, I'm coming to you today to talk about this jewelry box. I started on this jewelry box yesterday. It was a brownie frowny old jewelry box, maybe the kind, this is kind of the kind that my grandmother had on her dresser when I was a little girl. And it is sort of ugly and gold on the inside. I'm gonna do something about that today. I do wanna remind you, if you see the live up top in the red button, you're catching me live. If not, you're catching the replay. And if you have any questions just or comments, just ask them. I would love to know about your favorite jewelry box. You know, I don't know that I had a jewelry box when I was a little girl, but I always wanted one of those that had the little twirl and ballerina in it that played the music. I did find out yesterday that I'm going to turn it on back here. I got this one at a either a garage sale or a flea market, but it does play music. I don't know when, but I just... There it goes. It plays music, love story, when the bottom drawer comes out. But yesterday, I painted this in Dixie Belle paint, um, Flamingo, for the all over. Then I went back over it with Dixie in the areas here, dry brushed a little, and did some stenciling on top with uh, Dixie Belle. Oh my goodness, what's that color? Everybody has one. Mermaid tail. And then I went over that, then with the uh, Dixie Belle pearlescent glaze to try to give it a little bit of a glaze. Still didn't like it. Went over a little bit of areas with the Dixie Belle uh, burnishing wax. I went first around it with the dark teal. Then I went back over it with the copper. And I did like that in, in some areas, but it still looks a little bit plain. I tried to put a couple of small stencils. This is the stencil I was using. Uh, in this area here on the drawers and even this tiny butterfly when I took the drawers out it just didn't do good on there it didn't look good so I rubbed that out and this was leather this is a, a padded little piece right here but I just painted right over it and now today it's still missing something and I don't know what to do or what I'm gonna do but one of the parts that we're gonna do here is where I'm gonna just paint some little flowers or something on here and we're going to mix the Dixie Belle paint. I've got a little bit of water in this cup here. And I'm going to mix the Dixie Belle paint like, say, one quarter paint to three quarters water to really, really, really thin it down. And then use the pigments that are in there to sort of dye or change the color of this uh, gold felt that uh, inside the drawers and at the top. So I may as well take the drawers out because we'll be doing that in a minute. But I just thought I would share that. <laughs> I guess we're going to get serenaded for a little while. Uh, I just thought I would share that with you for uh, in case you decided to work on a project of your own like this too. I got out today. Uh, I got out the flamingo again because I didn't, you know, I was going to sand this off and leave it brown on the inside. But I'm not going to do that now, now that I'm going to fiddle with the inside. But I got out uh, Peony, which I used on another project recently. I got out Plum Crazy, which I'm just plum crazy about, which is pretty similar to the Peony, but, you know, has a little bit of purple maybe added. Almost matches my fingernails, huh? And I got out uh, Daisy. It's brand new. I've never used it before, but I've been wanting to. I'm really in a yellow mood lately. And I wanted some green on here because I thought I would do some vines through there, but I don't have a bright green. All I have is this dark green, uh, collard green sitting here with me. And I don't know that I want to use that. So I'm thinking, you know, as a grown up, we think about vines and vines are green. But as a an artist instead of a grown-up I get to do things that I want to do we're gonna do vines but I'm gonna do them in whatever color hits my brush at that moment and then the same thing's gonna happen to the inside so I don't know whether if I do this I can do the floral part first um, then this can stay open and it's not gonna it's not gonna mess it up so let's just do that first I got out just some of these El Cheapo brushes that came in the 25 pack for $5.99 from um, Michaels, and that's what we're going to use. I have no idea what's going to go on here right now. I should have planned it. Might not be my strong point. So, it just needs something, and I don't know if when I fill this in, if that's not going to make it need something every place else. You know how that goes, but I can play with this jewelry box all I want to. Right? Who says we're, it's not like not in a hurry so my favorite 
sort of flower to paint with is a semi-daisy, so that's what we're going to work with here. My favorite flower in real life is called an Alstromeria. It's also known as a Peruvian lily, but the real because it looks similar to a lily, but the real name for it is Alstromeria. They last for like two weeks. It's an awesome flower, and they come in all kinds of colors, like uh, yellow and purple and burgundy. Okay, so here's my center one, and it's off center of course this whole thing looks off center that's a little bit crazy you can see that here's the top knob that was already on the box that's not centered it's it's not even centered over this thing going in or this down here so i guess if they didn't worry about it i'm not going to worry about it that would have driven my mother crazy just fyi so i'm going to go a little bit higher than that one on this one This, I'm getting really, really good coverage out of this, especially going with a yellow over another color paint. I wondered if I was going to have to do two or three coats or anything. Okay, now I'm going to go a little bit lower and put another one down here. I don't know how weather was in your area, but in our area of Louisiana, it was, there were tornadoes everywhere, power outages. Um, there's, on my way to work, there were trees down everywhere. We're all so lucky to have came through it as well as we did and just be at work and having a normal day today because I know there are people who are less fortunate and we do say a little extra prayer for them. So I'll do the same thing here, but instead of going up, I'm gonna go low on this side. This absolutely doesn't matter at all, but if you haven't worked with stuff like this before, varying your levels is another one of those things, like, uh, you can have things be symmetrical for some people that's very important that they all be lined up and that this one be in the center and that all of that to my mother that was all very important to me there's a small amount of symmetry that's important and a small amount of creativity that requires things being asymmetrical or not being symmetrical and I try to embrace those imperfections, but I'm weird about the, um, what do you call it? The odd number thing. One, two, three, four. So we definitely have to at least have a fifth one. I'm gonna just go higher with this one. So once you get a rule in your head and believe it to be so, then you stick with it. I wonder if it's like a superstition. My art will not be good if I ever do something in an even number. Today is November 1st, which started uh, NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writing Month. Every November, there's a challenge that goes on on NaNoWriMo.org. This is my 15th year to participate, so I got all my chapters lined out and as much as I could get written. You, the goal is 1,667 uh, words a day for the every day the month of November will be 50,000 words at the end so I'm gonna do that before I before the end of my day okay I'm gonna go do the center of my flowers now with this uh, plum crazy just to give a dot to my daisies I like it better already it needed something I don't know whether I'm gonna need to bring some of that color up or down yet probably will again I'm just gonna go out of the lid because there's plenty in there nothing else my granddaughters will like it they like near about anything and these are their favorite colors I I probably know more 10 year olds than I should for a, a 55 year old you know what let me go ahead and do something what can I do with this let's go ahead and just put him a little bit in in the body of the butterflies that are up there because I got it on my brush so why not and some polka dots 
also in threes, of course. Because the world would fall apart if I didn't use odd numbers. Wonder if these drawers are gonna need that to make me happy. Let's do it. Why not? Don't worry, be happy. Got to have a little bit of fun trick-or-treating last night. We went to a program called Which Way on Main in Leesville, Louisiana, and it started the, the bad rain and everything. We were able to go be there for the first hour before the rain and stuff started, so we were pretty lucky. Okay, so now I'm going to go with some of the peony because that's a bright pink. Get a little of this going here. There's some in the lid, same thing. I'm gonna use that. That way I don't over dip my brush. And what do we do? I'm gonna try to get it really, really, twirl my brush to get it really thin and see if I can. Work on my petals a little bit. I'm not trying to perfectly go to the edges of the petals, just inside the petals. I like it. You like it? Can you see it? What I'm excited about is seeing how uh, mixing the Dixie Belle with the water and sort of using the pigments in the paint to dye the felt that's on the inside of, of here and the inside of the drawers and see how well that works. You have to just worry about, I mean, it's such a, it's such a bright gold color and not a yellow color. I mean, a bright deep, you know, a sort of a deep gold color. And I don't know, you know, like the yellow and blue makes green thing. What in the world do you put in there? that's gonna, cause the gold's gonna come through. You gotta, you gotta think about that. Thought about just using the yellow to brighten it up. Now I'm so in love with this um, peony that I don't know if I'll be able to control myself not wanting to put that in there. Sometimes I'm not the boss of me when it comes to color. <laughs> Sometimes I just do whatever the heck the paintbrush leads me. Okay, I'm going to go with the polka dot theme because I was going to do the uh, vine, but now that I'm not going to do a vine, I can still lead from flower to flower with my polka dots. in there pink don't worry pink be happy so what do we do here one two three one two three one two three we're gonna do a circle of circles there you go it's better than leaving it alone Now I'm going to wish it had bling bling on it. One, two, three, three, two, one. One, two, three, one, two, three. Let's put a little bit of this pink on top somewhere. I'm going to do lines.
If nothing else, this will be a happy jewelry box with all these bright colors on it. I'm not trying to make these lines match up in distance, length, size, thickness, nothing. Just trying to get a bright color all the way around the edge. Okay. Still need something. I don't know what. So let's figure out what to do. I don't know. What do y'all think? It's going to be, um, let's do this hinge in bright pink. It's, instead of trying to hide it, flaunt it. Probably fixing to regret that because I'm going to open that, but I'll do it after the drawers. I can go over it with, I'm going to dilute it so I can do the plum crazy. I can do the bright pink. I can do the bright yellow to stay with the yellow. That's probably what we should do, but I just don't know if the yellow is going to have much coverage. Hey, Danette, I'm trying to decide. This is yellow, or like a gold felt, but it's really too grown-up looking for a jewelry box that's this young person looking. So I'm going to try. I got myself a little bit of water, and I'm going to try to dilute the paint and just use the pigments out of it. Dilute the paint like one part paint to three parts water and then uh, paint this felt with it to try to get it a little bit of a different color and I don't know whether to do I'm going to do I want to do the yellow but I know it's not going to cover I'm going to do this plum crazy I think that's the kind of the darkest of the colors I have here and I can't get it open here we go and my scientific measuring is not so good either. I'm gonna use this other cup and do the paint first. And then pour the water in. Seems like a lot of water, but I, want, I don't want it to be all stiff and everything. I do wanna just use it for the pigments. So if it doesn't work, that's okay too. Oh, like, are you the bearer of my beverage? No, I brought you your beverage. Oh, I'm done drinking it. I've been thinking I was waiting on Candy to bring me my drink. She done mixed it up for me. I'm done sitting here drinking it and thinking I was waiting on her. Okay, so this is thin, thin, thin. Can you see it? It's like thinner than milk. Not as thin as just water, but thinner than milk. If you've ever tried it, it's probably the consistency of rice milk. Here we go. What you got to lose? What you got to lose? Looks like it's staining it real well. I'm pleased. But man, is it sucking it up. This gold stuff was thirsty. Thistle, I think, um, even if I wasn't needing, you know, this doesn't stink. I don't, I don't want to put it that way. But a lot of times when you get something from a flea market or a thrift store or a garage sale or something like that, it's going to smell like mothballs or something. Uh, like the big piece that I did the other day and sometimes just sealing or painting or something inside the drawers will help to alleviate some of that but this one surprisingly did not smell bad but this will still help to refresh it 
It's definitely going to be a happier drawer on the inside. I don't want it to be dripping wet and then and it is pretty wet and then cause the whatever has glued this down to come unglued uh, nor do I want it to like sour or anything I guess I should leave it open all night um, today's my last day to work this week so I won't be back to look at this until Monday Happier already. I sure do like it. I love that these mineral paints are. So oh, girl, what I do? Look what I did. I got it on the outside. I'll rub it in and pretend it was supposed to be there. Nobody knows but me and you. You won't tell, right? Just trying to get to the top and get make sure that I get all of this done. Gosh, it looks so much better. I'll show you in just a second the comparison between this one and the other drawer that I haven't done yet. But I'm also gonna, now that I've got this everywhere in here, I'm gonna dip into this plum paint and do the tops of my drawers with it. That way I don't have to come back and sand them. but you don't want it too thick because I do want the drawers to open and close easily. That's cute, y'all. Even if I did do it myself. Look at the difference. It's really cute and it almost looks orangey pink here and there in there where it's sinking in. Let's go ahead and do, well no because I wanted to wait for that to dry a little bit. Let's do the other one. I'm trying to get into all the corners and crevices. So much prettier in the plum. I can't believe the coverage I'm getting. It just amazes me. I probably could have done it with the yellow. I wouldn't have liked it as much, but I worried about the coverage over this uh, gold velvet. But it's awesome. about used it all up. And get a little bit more water and a little bit more paint. That's my stirring method. Thin. 
and the when you water the paint you know with this many pigments in it down this thin and then you go over a fabric like this it, it doesn't make the fabric stiff because it's most of the paint and other parts that are in the paint that would make it stiff from being just a paint uh, you know it's, it's so watered down that it doesn't affect that it's just the pigments and the actual dyes and things that are in it that uh, stick to the fabric so it's when you use it this wet and then let it dry it it's soft if it's not as soft as you want it or you're or not as as dyed as deep as you want it and you want to put another coat you can lightly sand in between the coats to uh, prepare the surface to take more pigment I'm not thinking we're gonna have to do that because this is covering so well just so pleased edges shoot didn't mean to get the water down when I meant to get the actual paint for this part so the, the using this is how you would paint I'm, I'm gonna paint an apron I hope next week that it's black so I'm trying to decide whether to put you know do like a spill of white all over it and then put the design over that to make it easier to be seen or exactly how I'm going to do it but hopefully I'll uh, be able to do that next week and uh, because the first one I did that is not all the way done yet the one that I've been working on is uh, I was using fabric medium with uh... oh look this is loose a little bit there I'll have to glue that down later if I need to which I'll need to but um, anyway uh, I used a fabric medium or textile medium along with uh, acrylic paints to paint the apron that I've done so far and which worked great but it uh, I felt like there was probably some type of sizing or stiffener or something like that on the uh, on the aprons because it was difficult to paint and when I painted the uh, hats that I did a couple of weeks ago I just used the regular paint and I did not use a textile medium and then I heat set it by putting it in the dryer and that worked very well so that's what I'm gonna try with the aprons next and we can learn that together it'll work or it won't because I have a gallon of textile medium, so if that's what I need to do, that's what I'll do. I'm going to need to mix up a little bit more. There's a pretty good amount of the felt inside here. The whole bottom is lined and the whole back is lined. The sides are wooden. I'll do them just with the regular paint. But the part that I'm needing to use the pigments to dye, there's a good bit of that in there. So make a decent sized batch here. So I'm doing about one quarter paint to three quarters water.
This is not easy. Probably could have left this piece alone. But oh no, that ain't my style to leave something alone. Probably even gonna need another patch. This is really sucking it up. We're having a shift change here, so we're liable to see some of the employees come in to tell me bye and some new ones come in to tell me hi. And everybody's afraid to be on a live. Afraid y'all will bite them, I reckon. I'm just dipping in my paint water over here because I haven't used anything else in there. Probably going to get a little bit more. A couple of paint brushes worth of the paint to mix with the water. This will be the actual part of the liner that, you know, someone's jewelry will be sitting on. So I want it to look nice. This is so meditative, you know? If I did this all night long in my dreams, I wouldn't wake up tired. I'd wake up content. Okay. Can you see that? The whole inside is now the plum color. Love, love, loving that. carefully try to paint these inside edges always if you can turn your piece there you know what I mean it does make life easier when you're trying to get up into a tight place at least turn your piece to where you get a little bit more cooperation So 
surprised. My husband hasn't called. I forgot to turn the do not disturb on. Oh yeah, this is a much happier jewelry box. getting the top and the bottom here even though you'll never see this later I do want to kind of have it match up but I went a little too far over right here Let's see if I can erase that absolutely how about that it's erased with just water and a damp brush I mean water and a brush okay yay The plum looks a little bit different when it's not going over the gold, of course, um, but it's going to be very complimentary because it has the same tones. There would be no other color that would look better. let this dry and put another coat on this part because this will be an area that you'll see quite often I had a little bit of run over from the other paint color yesterday so that probably would need to be sanded down a little and then I will put another coat of this unless it just looks aged and time worn and like it's supposed to be that way then I'm going to leave it alone and let it be who it's supposed to be. Okay. So far, so good there. And the other thing I'm going to do is get this other little brush back out and put some polka dots right here. Because polka dots are the thing, right? On this piece. Pretty dang happy to me. Let's see the small one. Oh, look, here's another surface that looks like it's begging for polka dots. What do you think? I think it's much happier than it was an hour ago, right? Or 20, 30 minutes ago, ever how much long ago. I like it. It's very busy, but it's, I like it. I'm going to get some more yellow. Why can't I leave it up alone? I'm going to put just a little bit more yellow something on there. The pink has taken over. Or the plum crazy now. This yellow is gorgeous. This is uh, daisy, so I guess it's only appropriate that we be painting daisies with it. What if we go 
put a circle right in the middle of all these plum circles. And every center dot. That's definitely lightening it up. Um, we don't have any yellow on the top. Just put a couple of dots on each butterfly, right? Loving it so far. Loving it a lot. I'm going to do the very tip of the antenna and a yellow dot as well just to be smaller on these little ones larger on this one okay that's plenty of yellow up top i think you could come in if we have any it's called no or nitrous oxide <coughs> the three areas it would be, it could also be NOS, is in with the amino acids, yeah, in with the before. men's products, or somebody may have put it alphabetical. Okay. But I know we did, now carries it, and also Twin Lab is usually the two brands okay. that we would get it. Okay. Thank you. Let's just put a little bit of a daisy right here. Some areas the pink just overtook the yellow and I think the yellow was important for the brightness. The happiness up inside this here joint. Yellow is known as one of the happiest colors. I actually, the siding on the outside of my first house that I had built was in yellow because I always wanted it to feel happy. thing's gonna be so gaudy ain't nobody but me and an eight-year-old gonna like it right up in the center of these bottom two flowers.
I don't even think they need to be covered around like those are. I've got to stop. <laughs> okay. So there's my jewelry box make oh, what did I do? How'd I do that? Must have had a little bit on there that rubbed in. But that's you know what? That's this color. We fix it. Boom. No worries. No worries. All right. I'm going to put this in. Hopefully not walk that up again. Hold it up for you to see. And I think it's a little bit of a boho jewelry box. It's definitely not a brownie frownie. There's some butterflies on top. The flowers on the front. Here's where we, if I can see it, painted the inside. Uh, the golden felt velvet stuff is now dyed pink. Same thing in the drawers. So I'm going to open these drawers to leave overnight to air out. Or over the weekend, I'm going to open this back up. And I'm going to pick up my mess. I appreciate you. Uh, let me see if I can fix this a second. I appreciate you joining me today. Uh, let me know if you have an old jewelry box that you want to do something cool to. Or if you have another flea market find. Something that's a good idea that you want us to maybe uh, redo together. Something fun. These uh, these projects are for nothing but fun. This is, they, these are not something that we're going to be able to put on Etsy and sell for a grand. Ain't going to get rich painting jewelry boxes. But we're going to have a good time. We're going to lower our stress level, which means we're going to be happier to be around and be a healthier person in the long run. And if a little bit of paint will do that for you, that's a pretty good miracle. I appreciate you watching. Bye.